Hey everybody, this is Eli Sussman, Managing Editor at Fish Stripes, covering all things Miami Marlins. Welcome to Fish Sequences, the first ever episode of this video series on our Fish Stripes YouTube account, where we review interesting sequences from Marlins history. Could be a single plate appearance or a rally, not going to stretch it much beyond that, just very brief moments within games in Marlins history, usually ones that panned out pretty well for the fish. We begin with a pretty recent occurrence from May 23rd, 2019, the Marlins at the Tigers. And into close, this game we fast forward all the way to the top of the ninth inning in Detroit. It's Shane Green. And as you can see here, Shane Green having an amazing season for the Tigers. That being said, he's one of the only great players on the field at this moment. The Tigers were terrible. The worst offense in the American League, one of the worst teams overall by run differential. The Marlins have won five in a row entering this matinee, and they themselves, though, are still equally terrible, the worst record in the National League, despite their recent uptick of late. And we have Shane Green in here trying to take care of business pretty easily, a 2-0 lead over the lowly Miami Marlins, despite playing better lately. This is a pitiful offense. He's trying to get done with this series in this game salvage a game from the series first up harold ramirez recently called up from triple a and he hits a dribble just to the right spot on the left side of the infield beats it out for a hit not the most graceful of plays you'll ever see look at that he, he trips so badly out of the box that he almost concedes that's an automatic out only to find out when he looks up that the shortstop booted the ball and the marlins have the leadoff runner on base so it's something working in their direction as they try to rally unlikely and probably to sweep this series against the Tigers. Harold is on tying run coming to the plate in the form of Martin Prado and Prado um, hits a soft ground ball of his own but it's perfectly right up the middle and that's allowing Harold to get into second base safely to avoid a what would have been a back-breaking double play. Prado himself though is uh, out pretty easily at first base and all of a sudden you only have two more outs to work with one runner in scoring position against this closer that i must remind you has converted every save so next up for the marlins it's neil walker another veteran bat in this situation not going to be phased by the pressure and he lines a nice single to right field and that gets the job done harold steaming around third base scores slides without a throw marlins cut the deficit in half so this is when things really get interesting they're finally on the scoreboard broke through the shutout and they have the tying run on base they take out neil walker replace him with rosel herrera who it was relatively good speed in this situation. Two more outs to work with, but they just need to get this runner around to keep the game alive. And it's one of the strangest quality appearances for Alfaro on the season thus far. The one thing that's most uncharacteristic of him is drawing walks. This guy is the most hyper-aggressive player, really, in all of baseball. Out of every regular player in baseball, he loves to be aggressive, to expand his own strike zone, has a lot of confidence in himself to put the bat on the ball. Sometimes it works out. A lot of the times he gets himself out, but not in this situation. Again, reminding you, going up against Shane Green, four pitches, a four pitch walk to Jorge Alfaro, a very rare sight, and it moves the potential tying run into scoring position. It puts the potential winning run on first base in the form of Alfaro. Alfaro's a pretty good runner himself, so he hit a ball into the gap here, or one that really hugs down the foul line on either side, and the Marlins are going to take the lead. Incredible. But not so fast. You have Miguel Rojas coming up to bat, and Rojas, look at that, batting in the number nine spot. Uh, you may be shocked to see Rojas all the way at the bottom of the order for a team that had, to this point in the season, the league's worst offense. But that was the reality of Rojas' season. He did not get off to a great start in 2019. He is a prime double play candidate. Not to jinx him. Oh, it's tailor-made double play to second, but he gets bailed out in this situation. Uh, a little bit of a hitch in this, what should have been a game-ending double play, and Rojas lunges to first base, called safe. Really, really 
bang bang in that situation of course the tigers are going to challenge it with an opportunity to win the game right there and then it's i don't even think it's definitive but remember the call on the field call on the field that's important was he beat the play at first base and that play is upheld stepping up to the plate curtis granderson one of the more respected players in the entire league and you know he's not intimidated by this situation but just being honest this is a guy who signed a minor league deal, and to this point in the season, he is really laboring at the plate, coming off the bench, remember, in this situation, just as a pinch hitter, because for the season, slashing 183, 281, 367, well below average, uh, not really the guy you want up in this situation, because you need a hit, you need a hit to actually tie it up. He does take a couple balls off the plate, and then Rojas, not who you'd expect to run in this situation, but gets credited with a stolen base, removing him seconds, taking the force play off of seconds, and at this point, all the Marlins would need is a single to win it. And this is the critical decision in the inning, where Granderson gets ahead in the count, Marlins are down to their final out, all Green has to do is come back to retire him some way, this veteran on the way out the door, and yet, Ron Gardenhire issues the intentional walk, and Granderson, he's a little surprised himself. Look at that, a little hesitation. Are you sure? Are you sure you want to send me on to first base and to bring up a, a, a younger player, to bring up a, a more dangerous hitter? And all right, so they do that. Garrett Cooper steps up. And what do we know about Garrett Cooper in this situation? He's 28 years old, and he really doesn't have much major league experience. Uh, a few fluky injuries, including one earlier in this particular season, although he does have a home run earlier in the series. Falls behind in the count 0-1, oh and, and then the improbable happens. A fly ball, deep left field, oh, this one's hit well and gone! A grand slam for Garrett Cooper, and the Marlins take the lead with two outs in the ninth inning! A Marlins team that had been held scoreless for eight innings flips the whole game around on that one swing by Cooper. He knew it off the bat. Rojas knew it off the bat. Shane Green knew it off the bat. And this is your first episode of Fish Sequences. Remember to leave a like if you like this new format, and we're going to be adding more episodes to the series. I hope you like it. Uh, looking back at some past Marlins games, and then hopefully when we actually get more live baseball again. Take me out to the ball game. This is a format that will be used to turn around and review key moments during the Marlins season as they happen. This is Eli Sussman. Go Fish.